Okay guys, so you often are asking me to show you a day in the life of Steph. So I thought I'd do that again. But it's nothing new, you guys know I kind of do this stuff, so here we go. What do we got in the bag? Okay, so we got spinach. So the thing with spinach is that it's a really high source of potassium. But when you guys have gut permeability issues, you develop histamine intolerance and well, we weren't designed to eat this every day. So if you have gut issues or permeability issues, you might develop a histamine intolerance to spinach and avocado and things of this nature. But I'm good for it. So got my spinach, my dark leafy greens. And uh, yes, I've got a lot of avocados. Actually forgot them. I had to go back and get some more. So you see, I got a lot of avocados here which are very high in potassium. And again, it's the same problem that you get with the spinach. A lot of people have avocado sensitivities and it might manifest in, I just don't feel good when I eat an avocado or I don't like avocados. Now often the avocado dislike is just because you don't like green things. But some people actually have an aversion to avocado because they have a sensitivity due to the gut permeability issues. I know. And that's so high in antioxidants, so good for glutathione production, but let's keep it rolling. What else we got up in here? So with avocado, I have the avocado oil. I'm not really a big fan of oils. They're not very stable. They are not. So for me to use an oil, I better have really, really good detoxification pathways, right? Because the oxidation of this is already happening right now. Clear bottle. And once you get the fat out of this, it's not stable. There's nothing like animal fat. So this is drizzled on a salad from time to time. And then I have to really work hard on my detoxification pathways. All right, here we go. But I'm starting to notice, notice that it, uh, it's, uh, it feels more stable than olive oil feels. That's subjective, right? All right, here we go. We got our flax seeds, which some tout as a way to help balance your estrogen and some say that the phytoestrogen spike it but nobody really knows yet so far so good so i got my little flax seeds i do a lot with them you guys know i do flax pancakes from time to time i'm doing less and less carp replacements just because i don't care all right and the prize the main well no when with the whole food i got um some of this stuff so nutritional yeast is great vegans use it as like a kind of a cheese replacement um, it's got a lot of carbs though, not gonna lie. Let's check out so the carb count. Let's see here. It's got two carbs uh, for every teaspoon and one fiber, which it's dry, it's not a lot of fiber. Some people, it can spike your blood sugar, so just dip, 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 little dashes on a salad. You don't need to do a teaspoon worth to keep the carb count low, but as you guys can see, it's really good in bees. Where are we? Is it focusing? It's not focusing. But uh, nutritional yeast is amazing, amazing, amaze balls, and I don't mean sweaty balls. But um, yeah, it's got a little cheesy taste to it, and um, it's not an active form of yeast, so this is not fungus. Yay! No fungus. What else? All right, and the winning prize is we've got. I don't need more counter space. Ace. Winning prize is all that butter. Boom! Right? I'll crush this stuff in a couple days. I should be their sponsor. Boom. So here we have my favorite. Now I really, this video is sort of about the gut permeability issues because here's another food a lot of people can't have. They have dairy sensitivities. Now people ask, why butter no milk? Why butter no cream? Because there are there's, there is less of the casein and whey, the growth factors, and it's mostly fat. But some people are so sensitive, right? They have such gut permeability issues, histamine issues that they can't even do the butter. A lot of people can't, and then you have to try ghee, and then some people can't do ghee, and they've got lard. You've got to do a lot of experimenting. But I'm really good with butter and the properties, the health benefits in this are redunculous. <gasps> That's all your vitamins, oh my goodness. Okay guys, if you wanna learn more, 
this is the day in the life of Steph. As you see, I just came back from Traders and, well, this brand that a lot of people don't like. It's just a quick shop. I will continue to do vlogs of what I purchase. Uh, next ones, I will go into what kind of proteins I purchase, the quality and such. People often ask me, can you do keto if it's not organic? And I say, well, hey, if you don't have, it's better than going to Panda Express, McDonald's, or, you know, whatever food that you're getting at supermarkets where you're having Doritos and really bad foods. But if you can try to get well-sourced, organic, pastured food, that would be optimal. I'm just saying, I know. So if you guys want to learn more about what I do, and I don't like to actually put up what I eat because my keto adaptation is not the same as yours because I've done it for so long. So of course my body can handle more nutritional yeast than most people can handle more coconut products and more protein. With that note, you guys know I'm writing the ultimate keto book and I like to go into what's going on with the body. You know, I'm, I'm not trying to make this sound easy. I'm actually telling you it's hard. It's a very small percentage of people that actually highly adapt. But for those who are willing to cross that bridge over to ketosis land, the benefits outweigh any struggle. Uh, I also have a Facebook keto course page and you can go to my site for that, stephanieperson.com. I've got an Instagram page, which is Stephanie Ketogenic and a uh fan page on Facebook, which is Stephanie the business person. And it's I'm out because I'm gonna go crush the gym right to now.